If you're an on-premise exchange administrator and you're having problems sending email because it keeps getting sent to the junk mail folder, then you can probably relate to the issue that I had over the weekend. So I was setting up this new 2019 exchange email server, and I've been doing a lot of uh, videos lately, video courses. Did one for LinkedIn, and I was having trouble sending email out for my test messages. And so... So I went on the seven hour odyssey with DMARC, DKIM, SPF, and reverse DNS. So I'd like to tell you about this, so hopefully it will help solve any of your problems. I've been doing email for a long time for a lot of different customers over the years. And I've also been making a lot of videos for YouTube and LinkedIn Learning and other places. And I've learned a lot about reverse DNS, and I've used that many times. So it's a fairly simple forward lookup and reverse lookup type of record. However, the reverse DNS lookup has to be set up with your ISP. So you can't set up a reverse DNS lookup with your own DNS provider. And so we called up Comcast and said, hey, we need to create this reverse DNS for techpublishing.net. And they said, sorry, but we don't do that on the weekends. So we were kind of out of luck there. And that was Comcast's commercial support. And they don't even do this on the weekends which is not saying a lot for them. So the next thing we needed to do after the reverse DNS record is set up, we also need to set up these SPF records, Sender Policy Framework. And these are used, as you see here, to detect forged addresses. So we want to set up one of these records, and it's fairly easy to do, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. So as you can see here, I'm using Network Solutions, although you might use GoDaddy or others. It's pretty much the same type of uh, setup. So Network Solutions, you can see I have a V equals SPF1, and that's pretty much the way all of these records start out, is these V equals SPF1. And then followed by the IP address, uh, you could also add in the domain name as well, saying that these are the specific domains that are allowed to send email. In my case, I just set up all, which means that any domains that send email email out from this IP address are going to be accepted. So go ahead and take those emails. But when I did that, this is what I got. When I went to go to the email headers, and that's basically when you open up an email, you can go to the hidden text that shows where the email came from and all other information about it. Uh, we see basically that my SPF record has passed. So fantastic. This is great. However, my DKIM failed. I'm like, DKIM? Oh man, I can't believe I got to set that up. So I got to set up a signature for DKIM. So let's see what that's about. So here's DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail. And it's used to sign emails for verification. And although I have set up many email domains in the past, this is the first time I was actually unable to send email out because my DKIM wasn't set up. So if you don't have a DKIM record set up, which is also a text record, then uh, basically what happens is it goes to part of any type of spam check. It's not in and of itself going to stop an email, but it adds up these points. And if the points go over a certain amount, then your email is going to be sent to the junk folder. So I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and set up a DKIM. But uh, what's the easiest, fastest way to do that? we go back into that hidden text record that we got when the email got sent to junk mail, we also find out that there's no DMARC. So the DMARC is not set up either, and that's also going to add up with the spam total that's going to keep my email from getting delivered. So not only do I got to set up a DKIM, but I got to set up a DMARC as well. So what's a DMARC? Well, as you can see here, it's got a really long name because it's an acronym that uh, a whole bunch of different companies came up with, and it took them a while to agree to what it's going to be called. So this is an anti-spoofing technique. And it's uh, if you've ever seen email that came from yourself, then you've been spoofed, <laughs> basically, or email that came from other domains. It turns out it really didn't come from those, those domains. So some companies got together and said, hey, let's figure out how to keep this from happening. So what we really need to do is to have reverse DNS, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC all set up. And uh, I've done some reading on this. And I found many different blogs, I found many different websites, and there are a lot of different ways to set these things up. So what's the easiest, fastest way to make this work so I can get my email sent out? Well, I'll show you, and this basically came from a Microsoft website. So if you go to emailarchitect.net, as you see at the top, 
and download this DKIM for Exchange Server and IIS SMTP service. This works on Exchange all the way from 2000 up to the current version, which right now is 2019. And although the directions are a little bit outdated, I'll show you exactly what I did to get this to work. And this product is, it's not free. However, it's free for the first 30 days. So you can basically get this done at no charge. But if you want to uh, use it after that, then you'll have to pay for it. I'm back in my Exchange server, and I've just gone ahead and I'm going to recreate what I did. So I downloaded this Exchange Domain Keys product, and I'm just going to run through the installation. I'm not being paid by this company. This is just something I found on my own. And I was able to use it without actually paying for it at all because it works for the first month. Now, don't worry if you get any PowerShell errors during this installation. They just flash up for a second and then they disappear. Uh, the installation will continue to go through. And when it's all done, we'll be able to launch it and make it work. You'll need to make sure that you install this on the Exchange server itself. And I made sure I did a thorough antivirus uh, scan and made sure that there was no viruses or any other issues and I have not had any problems. And as I mentioned before, it is mentioned in a Microsoft uh, blog as being a trusted product. So once this is all installed, make sure that you go into your services and confirm that they've all restarted okay. So I'm in services and we can see that they are all running, so we're good to go. And now we're going to launch the product. So let's start with the DKIM configuration. So you want to click on New to get a new domain. So I'm going to type in techpublishing.net and leave the selector at 1024. And that's because most uh, organizations don't support anything stronger than that. So we're going to leave everything else exactly the same. And we're just going to click Save. Now we see that we have a certificate file name and a PFX uh, certificate that was created, as well as a password for our certificate. So I'm going to copy the password, and I'm going to browse to where our file is. So there it is right there, and now I'm going to choose to install it. And I'm going to paste in my password. And I'm just going to choose Automatically Select. And now the installation was successful. Now I need to click on Deploy Key. Now here it has the option for the DNS server for the local host. So if you're running DNS on this particular server and it's publicly available, which is really unlikely, I doubt that that's going to happen, uh, then you can use this. But we're not doing that and you're probably not either. So just go back by clicking on your domain and choose Export Public Key. And we get this new window that pops up. So now what we want to do is we want to copy this information and paste it in. So I'm going to paste this information into my Network Solutions account. I'm going to start by copying the text record. And I'm going to put that under the host information and paste it in. Now let's go back. And now I'm going to copy my public key. And I'm going to paste that as well. The problem was is that Network Solutions ended up duplicating the name that was under the host part of the record. So instead of just s124 underscore domain key dot tech publishing dot net, it added an additional tech publishing dot net. So it took me a while to figure out I need to delete the tech publishing dot net from here along with the period, and it will automatically append this particular host name with .techpublishing.net. So if you leave in your domain name, it will duplicate it and your entire uh, DKIM won't work. It also is the same thing for your DMARC. There's also an option for the outbound signing policy, and I recommend that you go ahead and copy this information in as well. So I'm just going to copy the policy, which is just a little generic thing, and you can see add this into the do domain record, and this will take care of it. So there's two different text records for this particular option. So now I'm just going to go ahead and paste in that information, and all I have to do for this part is just the underscore domain key. I don't need to put any other information in there. So now I've got 
my SPF record, very simple to create. Now that you know, all you got to do is put the IP address in, dash all for all domains. Then the DKIM record, which we needed that certificate for, and then followed by the domain key. And you see this record that you see right here. So next we need to go on to our DMARC. We'll close our box here. DKIM is done. Now we have the DMARC tool. It also gives you the option for an SPF as well. So if I wanted to, I could have done it just this way and clicked on Start, and then it'll create a record for me. And you can see it's a very similar record to what I already have in there, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's go back to the DMARC tool, and once again, I'm going to put in my domain name. Click Start, and we get our wizard once again. Now, I found I did not have to make any changes here. All I had to do was click on Deploy DMARC, and you get this nice text all ready to be copied and pasted in. So, once again, we've got the uh, underscore DMARC.TechPublishing.net. So, you only want to put in underscore DMARC. You don't want to put in all that other stuff. And over here, we want to just copy this last line here where it says V equals D mark one without the quotes. So I'm just going to copy that and it's pasted in. So we have underscore D mark on the host side and then we have V equals D mark one and we have the none percent equals 100 followed by the semicolon at the end. So all of our records are now in for SPF, DKIM, DMARC, and of course the reverse DNS once Comcast <laughs> decides to uh, make the change on their end since they don't do them on weekends, which is unbelievable. And we can click continue, and we see that we can just save the changes and we'll be good. Now take a look at our headers. We see that our SPF has passed as it did before, but now we also have a DKIM pass signature as well. Here is the public key that was published with the DKIM record, the text record that we added. And the email was actually delivered into our inbox instead of going to our junk mail. So all of these records actually worked and you can go ahead and check them out as well. Remember that product is a paid product after 30 days and it runs as a service in the background on your exchange server. So uh, make sure that you check out the pricing before you do the installation. So that was my fun with uh, sending email out and making sure that it doesn't get caught in junk mail using on-premise exchange